request it on behalf of my uncle. Very good. <laughs> Members calling? I call the Honourable Member Tim Horan. Brendan, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll put my glasses on. <laughs> Apology accepted, Mr Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chair. I take the call tonight to urge every member of this House to vote for a public referendum by postal vote to bring this bill into effect. That is provided for in Supplementary Order Paper 187 in my name. Mr Chair, the opportunity to have a decision made by the public of New Zealand should be welcomed by those both in support of and those opposed to the bill. There is nothing to be afraid of and everything to embrace. And, sir, two speakers previous to me, uh, two speakers who, uh, two members that I respect very much, in the Honourable Kevin Haig and, and the Honourable Ruth Dyson, um, said uh, uh, words that actually disturbed me in so far as suggesting that a referendum is contrary to the minority view and therefore the connotation that somehow if this went to referendum that the will of New Zealanders would be against this bill. And so to hear fellow MPs suggest that leaves me in a conundrum because I was under the impression that we were here by the will of the people of New Zealand and therefore should be exercising that will. So all of us in this chamber have been inundated with mails and email about this reform of marriage. It has generated strong passions on both sides of the debate. Same-sex marriage is an issue that many New Zealanders have a very firm view on, and no one can argue that it has long-term social ramifications for our society. Consultation by referendum with New Zealanders is something that Parliament should do rather than asserting a right to a conscience vote on a dramatic social change such as this. And importantly, I would defend the right of every voter to be able to choose either yes or no. There will be a clear choice made. New Zealanders uh, will make that in a referendum and the fairest, it's the fairest and most sensible way forward, Mr Chair. If the 120 men, 121 men and women in this House purport to make the final decision on this major social change, then I fear that it will not be readily accepted by the broader New Zealand. And there is a potential, sir, to be creating a new group and to use uh, Louisa Wall's words, second-class citizens whose feelings of injustice and resentment will last for years. Sir, I am concerned that bitterness, acrimony and bigotry could linger. However, if we have a referendum and we go to the people of New Zealand, there is a far greater likelihood of broad acceptance of the outcome and consequently harmony in New Zealand. I would like to address sir, some of the things that have been said and if we uh, take the words from Chris Ockenvale two weeks ago, where the Honourable mem Member said a referendum is something you call for when you cannot make up your mind. Well, on the contrary, I say a referendum recognises that there are times when this House needs to recognise that there are prudent limits to the changes that it can initiate. Limits when it is necessary to obtain the endorsement of the public of New Zealand, who after all gave us the mandate to be here. Sir, the Honourable Member Kevin Haig in the second reading identified the key divide. Those New Zealanders, on the one hand, who see us as a pluralistic society in which Parliament creates a supportive framework, and those, on the other, who see that Parliament should legislate for a strict code of behaviour. The referendum I propose is not to appease the chronologically advanced. It would not be able to be hijacked to, to become an election bandwagon. Rather, this referendum is for all New Zealanders. It is for young New Zealanders, including those too young to understand and also those not yet born. It is also for those New Zealanders who feel a sense of helplessness, who have not been able to exercise their voice. 
This is about the new world. Mr Chair, I would like the people in New Zealand in 10 years' time to be able to look back and when they ask, was this change, this dramatic decision, the view of the nation or was it the decision of the state? Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Honourable Member, Brendan Horan. So this referendum will give that decision to the nation and divorce it from simply being the view of the state. To give the decision to the nation for harmony, for oneness, that our country's future depends upon. I ask members to vote for the supplementary order paper. And, sir, I would reiterate that there is no need to be afraid. We are not in a totalitarian state. There is no need to fear giving power to the people of New Zealand. For, after all, we are one country, we are one nation, and together we are all New Zealanders. Mr. Chair. I call the Honourable Member Moana Mackey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm happy to.